is Jeremy Redigal uh, from uh, actually Enemy Swim, which is just south of Sistin, but Sistin Wapnoyate. So we're Dakota, and we have our traditional game is this, is the same as uh, as the Anishinaabe, the Menominee, the uh, Sack and Fox, the Ho Chunk or Winnebago. So all the Great Lakes tribes played this style of lacrosse. So we would call this Great Lakes style. Then you have the game that the Iroquois Confederacy, the Haudenosaunee, the Onondaga, the Mohawk, and all of them, what they played. And you have stickball down south. So every region you go throughout the country, it kind of changes a little bit. But throughout all of North America, we had these, these types of ball games. Then we even had like our shinies. For those of you that were at the school today, you've seen that. Our shitty game where hockey comes from, okay? And our, uh, in Dakota, we say Tanwikapsicha, which is a woman's double ball game. It's very similar to lacrosse, except for the ball's a little different and the sticks are a little different. And then there's all kinds of other ball games that we played, but these were found throughout North America. So today at the school, I talked a little bit about the history of these things and the importance of them. A lot of these games, they, they come from uh, spiritual and uh, ceremonial use and then through time they evolved into games that we would use to uh, socialize in whatever it was we would go and uh, send a runner to other bands other clans or other tribes and invite them to come and play us there were certain times of year that they would do this it wasn't something we just did every day it was something that was at special special times maybe it was after all the hunting or all the harvesting was finished that's when those things would happen and they would come and they'd camp out for weeks and they would play these games for days on end and there'd be hundreds of people involved in it the whole village would come so either you were out on the field playing or you were um, a spectator or part of that but nonetheless this game is very old with all of the tribes so we have um, had this for for hundreds and thousands of years probably got to a point where it almost died out and we didn't we didn't play this game anymore you guys are fortunate because you're part of a generation where it's going to become a common thing to play this game when I was growing up you, you didn't hardly hear it or see it
Hello everybody, my name is Heaven Rickla. I'm I am from South Dakota, Pine Ridge Ridge Reservation, Oglala. Um what we're playing today in Red Lake, we're playing lacrosse with the tr traditional sticks back in the day where they used to play lacrosse and they make their own sticks. So I got I got my own stick from from a man that I randomly gave it to me. And um, he he said he randomly came up to me and he said, "I want you to have this." If you he asked me some questions and do you play lacrosse? And I, and I said yes. And then um, now we're all playing lacrosse. Bye. respect like it's a living thing and so I, I want to pass that on to you guys that you guys also have that kind of respect for it I'm not here by any means to uh, push my ways onto other people all I can do is, is talk to you and explain to you how I was taught and then you guys do with it as you please one thing that I was taught is that we don't step over things and I've heard uh, Anishinaabe people Dakota people Blackfeet people I've heard all different kinds of people talk about that we don't step over things that it's disrespectful. Whether it's a jacket laying on the floor in your living room or at a ceremony or whether it's a person, you don't step over things. So to me, that's one thing I notice a lot of when we play this game is people have their sticks laying on the ground and they step over the top of them. Just something I was taught to be mindful of. And we show that respect for it. The other thing is hitting them, throwing them. You get mad on the field because you missed the ball. And I see that a lot. So that ties into another thing that as young men, young women, these games taught us a lot of different values and teachings. One of them was that you remain in control of yourself, your emotions. A lot of you are younger and that's part of a natural law is that how you react to things, maybe act out. But once you start becoming a young man and young woman, it's expected of you to remain in control of your emotions. So if somebody you think fouls you, uh, is a little too rough with you, you think they're cheating, it's still within your responsibility to remain in control of your emotions and to find a positive way to address that. Because a long time ago, if you lost your temper out there, it was looked at as a cowardly thing. We really uh, had that. In, to this day, uh, stickball players down south Amongst the Choctaw and other uh, tribes down there, I've heard that they have elders that walk around with willows. And if you lose your temper out there, they'll actually start switching you. It gets chaotic out there, so you learn to think with a clear mind. And that's not just relevant to the game itself, but that's relevant to life. Because when you go out into life, things aren't going to be fair, right? So you have to learn to adjust and to adapt to those things and to remain in control, to remain centered. So we, with our traditional games, we didn't have a whole lot of rules like we do with our modern game. Part of that is because we believe that it's less stress and it's more fun to just go out there and to play. And that way it encourages everybody. A long time ago, everybody was encouraged to participate, whether they were playing or whether they were on the sidelines. The whole village, the whole community would come together to be a part of that game. And we used our elders and our spiritual leaders to lead us in prayer to uh they would usually be the ones to make this ball an elder from back home he told us pop up that means the ball is sacred nowadays we have all kinds of balls laying all over basketballs across balls baseballs but back back in the day they used to take their time and they would make it in a special way they would pray with it and so these things were treated with respect 
And so to me, we even have ceremonies that involve that ball. And so to me, when I look at it, it represents life, it represents the moon, it represents the sun, it represents the earth. So we need to think about that when we play these things. So this game it has, it has a lot of deeper spiritual meaning to it than what we may know today from modern sports. Hi, my name's Douglas and I'm nine years old and we're at BSU. We're gonna play lacrosse and right now I have a traditional stick and there's a lot of people over here and, they, and we're gonna be switching. Some people, younger kids are gonna be playing games and the older kids are, yeah, the younger kids are gonna play games and the older kids are gonna do something else. I'll be switching. Be witch. My name is Delicia Rai. Um, I'm from Red Lake. <laughs> and um, I'm 11 years old. We use rubber balls and they, we play in a large field where we could hit the pole. And if we hit the pole, we get a goal. But you would have to throw the ball. And if you hit it, you have to pick it up, throw it in the middle, and we would all have to scream. And when we grab the ball, we have to pass or throw, and it's not a individual sport, it's a team sport. of days you know you do the cut in one day dry another day you know and it's normally about I'd say a four-day process from start to finish. Bonjour my name is Ben Spears I'm from Red Lake in Boys Fort my father's Red Lake my mother's Boys Fort I am um, I'm uh, I live down in the metro Bloomington but I learned to make Ojibwe style lacrosse sticks and I've been just starting to teach it now that people have been asking me I've been making more for people and just in time I just started to I really love doing it it feels nice to see the game start coming back around more and more especially amongst the Ojibwe we haven't seen it I have grown I grew up on a reservation I didn't see the game at all I didn't I just seen pictures and heard about it um, I have sons that play lacrosse and that's what got me into wanting to make them a stick. I wanted to them to have a stick that their dad made them and to be proud of it and so I started on that venture just a year ago and from there I just started making more and more and figuring out little things here and there how to make them and just over time now I'm starting to get where I feel 
very comfortable making mistakes and I feel also blessed that I'm able to make them. It's fun to watch the kids when they get a new stick or people when you finally finish one and you bring it to them. But even with the stick, it, there's a lot of work that goes into making one stick. I mean, right now, today we're doing them in one sitting pretty much, but they're not, they're going to be workable sticks. I mean, they will play, be playable. I mean, they, they still should last, but it's, they just ain't going to have the quality and craftsmanship as one that you would take your time on. It, that goes with anything, though. We take our time on it. But it's just more showing people of what we're doing so they can maybe later go home and take their time on making a stick. Um, I guess what else would you want? I mean, I'm, I'm um Bullhead Clan, Owasa Sea. I'm enrolled in Red Lake, but I'm Fort blessed where I get to, I grew up in Net Lake. And so I get to the benefits of two reservations where I, I get to have family on both and experience the Red Lake walleye fishing, but also get to eat the Net Lake wild rice. <laughs> In my opinion, are the best of both. <laughs> uh, I'm a traditional dancer in powwows. My sons are dancers. Um, I just, I'm not someone who grew up having someone teach me things. I didn't have the, I guess you could say, benefits of a father. I know him now as I'm older. I mean, he's a good man, but he had his own struggles he had to go through to get to where he's at. But I've been blessed where I'm able to work with my hands and see with my eyes, uh, to pick up something, look at it, and just be able to make and create something out of things. And it's just a blessing. And a, I also feel blessed to be a Nishinaabe. I mean, we're, we got to, we get to look at things in a different way by being Anishinaabe and there's an understanding of things we have of this land and of these lakes and something as simple as a lacrosse stick. There's, we have a connection with it all and I feel very blessed to be part of it. Oh, Thank you. Oh Thank you. Yeah. But see, they didn't put that enough. So you got to angle that out more. Or made this one just an angle it out enough. So it'll still work, but the more you angle it out, then you're going to get a tight, nice tighter fit on there. Sometimes I use five holes. I go six just because she got more of a net. It's kind of thin. It'll work for now. I do it then. Hold on, it's not done yet. Yeah, that's the bar. Yeah, Hi, Bob. Hi, I want to be on camera. No, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to be here and good to see everyone in good health. And um, my own railway account is Hanusa Gandux. My Indian name is Hanusa Gandux. It means he watches over the house. Being a hot clan, I guess it fits pretty good. So I've um, been involved with uh, lacrosse my whole life, as long as I can remember as a player and now as a coach and I'm the head coach for the Iroquois national team and um, we're playing in Vancouver this uh, this summer July 7th to the 16th so should be should be a good tournament we've got some very good players um, the age group I've got is 19 and under and very fun to work with and a lot of talent a lot of skill a lot of speed so we should do well My name is Nikki Nuzikwe. 
a little odd woman and I am Jangan Ashimun. Uh, my name is Anna Sherwood. Uh, I really enjoyed my experience of playing double ball. It's a really fun game. You play at the straight stick. And uh, Dan Ninham was sharing a story about uh, a double ball being played in Anishinaabe communities. He said one of the elders said he's visiting with the net lake when he was a young boy. He found uh, one of the double balls in uh, in a tree um, when he's climbing a tree, and it was really old looking. And so they know that game was played by ladies here. And uh, it's a really fun game. It really promotes teamwork, and ladies of all ages can play. It's really easy to pick up because you just play it the straight stick. Uh, it involves a lot of passing, and people of different strengths and abilities can play. Some people might have speed, some people might have endurance. I just promotes passing and, and a lot of teamwork to score. It's a really fun game.